heads of state, ministers, UN ambassadors, NGO leaders, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum, nisam bulavinaka from Fiji and a very good day. First of all, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the organizers for putting in time and effort to make this event a possibility. I'm sure it wasn't an easy task to pull off this summit, but technology, ladies and gentlemen, is an innovative tool and we must use it to our advantage, especially now during these uncertain times. I'm indeed very grateful to have the opportunity to be part of a summit that greatly focuses on virtues that the world needs right now. Virtues of love, peace and the awakening of our conscience. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here today to celebrate and contribute to the International Day of Peace. The theme for this year's event is Recovering Better for an Equitable and Sustainable World. A very apt theme when we think about the challenging events that have taken place in the past year and a half. Since the global outbreak of the deadly, highly contagious COVID-19 virus in 2020, the strength of every affected country in the world has been tested to its limit. Many thought that they were sufficiently prepared. However, through no fault of their own, soon realized that no amount of, no amount of foresight or planning could have adequately predicted just how bad things possibly could be. The far-reaching effects of the virus, its rapid spread and the evolution of its variants in a very short span of time truly kick-started some of the most unprecedented challenges in our history. It is a known fact that the truest nature of people come out when they are faced with scenarios that prove to be very difficult to tackle. And what we have seen amongst our friends, families and fellow countrymen since early 2020 is a clear example of this. We have seen acts of kindness all over the world with countries going out of the way to help one another. However, ladies and gentlemen, every story has a hero and has villains. There have also been acts of malice, varying degrees exploding in every corner of the globe as the unpredictable nature of the virus continues to create doubt and fear on an almost daily basis. It is in times like this that we look to organizations such as the Federation of World Peace and Love. Since its establishment in the year 2000, Falkwell has done remarkable work in spreading the message of love and peace through its many summits held around the world, the highlight of which has been the ringing of the bell of peace and love. Peace and unity, ladies and gentlemen, are two very important factors that contribute towards an equitable and sustainable world, for they are intertwined. No unity means no peace, and it is when we achieve peace, then we will not have war. War is the main cause of human sufferings, in my view, in the world today. And our war right now, ladies and gentlemen, is with the COVID-19 virus. Through summits such as these, hundreds of world leaders have had the opportunity to draw inspiration from events, many of which, like today, have celebrated significant United Nations International Days. The learnings from these summits have gone a long way in generating much-needed positive energy when facing such troubling times. As I mentioned earlier, we have reached a point in our history where the need for acts of love and spreading the message of peace has never been more important. The whole world has suffered at the hands of an invisible enemy, an enemy that does not discriminate, an enemy that strikes without giving a thought to an individual skin color, socioeconomic status, gender or age. And while this virus has already taken so much out of us, we cannot allow it to take away our unity. We cannot allow it to take away, take away our fighting spirit. And we cannot allow it to take our willingness to believe that things will be better tomorrow. Now more than ever we need to come together and walk in solidarity as we slowly make our way towards recovery. A fantastic example of the impact that walking in unity and cooperation can have is evident in the discovery of the COVID-19 vaccine and of course the distribution of it. Our world's greatest, greatest scientists and medical minds came together at one united front to create a product in less than one year that ignited new hope amongst billions of people across the globe. The speed and efficiency at which this revolutionary discovery was made is quite simply worthy of nothing less than the applause of every man, woman and child out there. I for one see it as a testament of how innovative human beings can be when faced with a common enemy. 
And we begin our, as we begin our climb towards recovery, we must not forget that the battle against COVID-19 is still on. We have seen the best and the worst sides of people in the past year and a half. But all of that is exactly that, ladies and gentlemen, the past. Dwelling on the past will achieve us nothing. We must stay committed to our goal of ending this pandemic, armed with our strongest weapon, COVID-19 vaccines. If we are to ensure that we have a better world waiting for us, for our children and our people over the horizon, we must forgive and forget the wrongs that have been done during these terroristic times and instead focus on a better tomorrow. We must encourage and understand that no one saw this coming. In fact, it really does seem like we are living in a movie sometimes, doesn't it? It's like we went to sleep in one world and woke up in the other. But this is not a movie world, ladies and gentlemen. This is real life, with real people, with real challenges, and with real consequences. We must encourage and support one another, as well as push ourselves, act in good conscience all, all the time, for the benefit of everyone now, and for our future and future generations to come. There's still a lot of fear out there, and it is up to us to help those that are scared. It is up to us to dispel the lies, and educate those who don't know any better. Many of our people have fallen on dark and hard times and have been deeply, deeply affected by it psychologically and it is up to us to make this world a better place for their sake and for our own. The time to spread kindness and messages of hope and positivity is now. Hatred, lies, misinformation must not be given a seat at the table anymore. We have come too far and struggled far too much to let this happen again. The road to recovery is never an easy one and it requires sacrifice, it requires strength and of course it requires endurance and persistence. We must remember that the world we used to live in before this pandemic was built on persistence and undoubtedly it, will, it is our will to go on that that will help us overcome this. If we create a conviction within ourselves to do what we can to support our fellow humans and work together as one, we will surely have a more equitable and sustainable world to look forward to. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, before I end my contribution, I'd like to highlight these powerful words from Father's President, Dr. Hong Tao Tse, prayer for the world, in the hopes that it will allow us to see that it is our togetherness that will bring love and peace into the world we all live in. Let us remain humble, let us remain grateful, let us be united and let us uh, work in cooperation to overcome the challenges that lie beyond us. Thank you once again to the members of FAUPEL and the organizers of this event for allowing me to speak today and I wish every one of you a very very happy International Day of Peace. I personally believe that peace must, must exude from oneself. We cannot expect global peace if our own hearts and minds are not full of love and compassion for our people. These words I thank you once again and God bless you all.